efficiency add quality character to your prayer life i want to speak about character today for efficiency add quality character to your prayer life because a lot of people they wonder that while why they pray they have a very fervent prayer life very fervent prayer life but they don't have matching results they don't have what i call matching results the results that match or that suit their prayer life they don't have it so that's why today you know i, I had this leading last week to quickly prepare it and add it it was not part of the syllabus before but i had to add it because uh it, it, it came up i come again for efficiency that's the topic we are using add quality character to your prayer life you know the central topic is a uh, demonic structure you to rob you of your god-given destiny and we've been talking about prayer for the past i think four or three sundays now in the morning service now today i want to show you what you need to do to make your prayer life to command results praise the lord now so that it will not look as if god is not good on your side we used to have a, 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 a uh, I used to have a neighbor. Let me say I used to have a neighbor. In those days, I was very young. Uh, I, lived, I lived with my parents those days. And this, my neighbor, was a ma- member of the Mountain of Fire and Miracle Church. Now, I've, that church had been long ago. I'm telling you, long time story ago. Now, and this, my neighbor, when you say somebody is a fire brand, and see back in Ecuador. Now, she will be praying in her house. And in the third house, fourth house, there will be vibration. I don't want to mention her name because she's of blessed memory now. You know, a, a fireful, a warrior when it comes to prayer. An auntie, that auntie can pray for like, she's an evil woman. She could pray for four hours non-stop. Vibrating to the point that in those days, that was the days that uh, uh, shouting prayer used to rain. That's how we knew uh, those who are on fire for Jesus, their house will be shaking. The neighbors will not be able to sleep. Now, and she lived in a house. Uh, she does business in a house opposite her house. There was a, an Igbo man that lives in that same house. The Igbo man sells beer, you know, and pepper soup. You see, all those stops. Now, this lady also sells food, Igbo food, but she lives opposite. Do you know that? Look up. Everybody respected this auntie because of her prayer life. Very fireful. But this particular day, when I heard of her death, I was touched. You know what led to her death? She had bad mouth. Fathom prayer life. So she had misunderstanding with that evil man. And she abused that evil man to the point that the man got angry. He was preparing cooking pepper soup. It was not the days of gas. He was using stove to prepare pepper soup. The man went there, removed the, pep- the pepper soup pot from the fire, put it down and carried the stove and went to that lady, that woman. She never married. She never had a child and threw it on her. As they landed on her, the, you know, kerosene will come out. She caught fire. She was screaming and burning the man said, go and die. You and your bad mouth. By the time they will rescue her, they took her to the hospital. She died in the hospital. Her family members stood up. They took the man to, to police station. He landed to go to court and uh, he was jailed. Life imprisonment because the case was, you know, he had a good lawyer. He swept the case from murder to manslaughter and he got life imprisonment. But sister, that's it. I don't want to mention it. That sister was gone. Now, it was from that sister's life as I first learned that if you are a prayer warrior and you don't have good character, you will still suffer. Now, I will tell you the good character, what the good character is all about. Let's start with Matthew. Let's put a scripture to it. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 16. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 16. It says, 
Okay, let's so read together. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 16. Let's be on our feet in honor of God's word as we read this word of God together. For efficiency, add quality character to your prayer life. Add quality character to your prayer life. One, two, and let us go. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns of figs of testers? Let's read again. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or, or figs of thorns? Now, be seated. May the Lord give us deep revelation and understanding today in Jesus' name. Now, don't forget what I said. Your character is your identity. What's your character? Your identity. That's why the Bible says, when you, you don't need to ask, what kind of tree is this? You just see the fruit of the tree and you will know the tree it is. Now, look at the tree. You see, when you see purple, you know that this is a purple tree. Now, your character is your identity. And I always tell people, you don't need, uh, you can introduce yourself quickly by telling us your name. Introduce yourself quickly by showing us your credentials. But hear me. If a person stays with you for at most 24 hours, your character will reveal who you are. That's why you must know it. If there's anything that can open a door without you talking, is your character. If there's anything that can close a door without you talking, is your character. So if there's any aspect you must work on, even after you have prayed, I wrote here, in my script, in my note, your character is the side of you that reveals who you truly are. The side of you that reveals who you are. Without talking, without giving any introduction, people just look at you, you know, spend some time with you, they'll be able to say, this person is well-mannered or not mannered at all. That's why if you read the scripture, you will see that Nabal was identify was described as a churlish man they said my master Nabal, look at it he's a churlish man now he's a selfish man he's a man that doesn't care about people they they use his character to identify and to describe him so so many people are praying god bless me it's not that god is not ready to open their doors but they are using their character to close the door that they are praying to be opened that's why, listen to me as a child of God, for efficiency, if you have a solid prayer life, you need to work on your character. Now, and when we talk about working about, uh, on your character, the two most important characters you should develop, write it down, is number one, purity. That's your relationship with God. And two, good human relation. That's your relationship with man. Number one, purity. That's your relationship with God. But good quality human relation, knowing how to relate with people, that is what will determine how long you will last with people. And today, I don't want to speak about the other one, the first one, relationship with God. I've taught you so much on that. But today, I want to teach you about relating well with people. You know, all the prayers you are praying, God help me, God bless me, God prosper me, God won't send angels to you. Who will he send? He will send man. But most times, we close our own door because we don't know how to relate with people. And I've always told you, if you are going to relate with people, there are three things you must put in place. Now, what's the first one? Respect everyone. I will soon go into the teaching. Respect everyone. If you are going to relate well with people, don't be treating people like trash. Respect everyone. Whether they are small, small or great. Rest, just make up your mind that you will respect. Now, what does it mean to respect? Respect is to show honor to people. Don't treat them as if they don't exist. Now, what's the second way? I've taught you this one too before. What's the second way to relate with people? Listen, everybody needs love. Love people sincerely. And the Bible even shows us that we must love our neighbors the way we love ourselves. Number one, respect people. Number two, love people sincerely. 
with a genuine heart. Which means, whatsoever you will not like anyone to do to you, don't do to anybody. Now, when you love people sincerely, your good human relation attitude, hear me, is, is great. And what's the third thing in relating with people that you can relate well? Don't expect too much from anyone. Now, when you are relating with people, don't be over-expectant. Don't be over-expectant. Don't be over-expectant. I will show you three examples of how God answered some people's prayers because they had good character. Let's look at the first example. The first example is in 2 Kings chapter 4, 1 to 7. Let's look at this case. 2 Kings chapter 4, from verse 1 to verse 7. Please put it on screen. I want everybody to see it so that we can learn our lessons. 2 Kings chapter 4, from verse 1 to verse 7. Please give me a watch that works. Maybe this one. Okay, this one is okay. Now, let's go there. Look at the scriptures. The Bible says, Now, there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. Look at her condition. My husband is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear God. Look at that. But before he died, he owed some money. And the creditor is going to take unto him my two sons to be his slaves. Sir, look at my condition. My husband is dead. The only two sons that I have, my creditor, the, his creditors have come to take them. Sir, sir, please help me. Look at this. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, Thy handmaid had not anything in the house, only a small pot of oil. I have just a pot of oil. Are you here? Just a pot of oil is what I have. Then verse 3. Then he said. Now this is where human relation comes in. Then he said. Go. Borrow the vessels abroad. Which means from far. Of thy neighbors. Hey. Now go to the house of your neighbors. And borrow what? Empty vessel. Make sure the one you are going to borrow. Is not a few. Now, what was the response? Let's be true with the leading so that we can go with, into the teaching. Verse 4. Did she do likewise? Show me verse 4. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons and shall pour out into all those vessels and thou shalt set aside that which is full. Next verse. So she went, so she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured out the oil she was pouring it from vessel to vessel and it came to pass when the vessel were filled were, were full that she said unto her sons bring me yet a vessel and he said unto her there is not a vessel pay attention the woman the, the sons did not say sir ma ma there is no one to borrow us again you know what the son said? Everybody that has a container in our, our, in our neighborhood has given to us. M Mommy said, go and bring more. He said, there is not a vessel more. That was when the oil stopped. Now, what is the common sense lesson? This woman had a condition. Oh, Jack, they say. Oh, they think back. Lord, you should pray. Lord, help me. Lord, do wonders. Lord, open doors. Lord. Now, God was set to answer her. God made the man of God to pass. The man of God now said, you know what? You have, what do you have? This small oil. I have this small oil, sir. This is what I have. I have just one pot of oil. This is what I have. Just like the one here. And the man of God said, you know what? Go to the neighborhood now. Which means, go around your neighbors. Borrow vessels. As long as you have a vessel, the oil will not cease. As long as you have vessels, the oil will not cease. And she sent her son, go to Mama Maker's place. Go to Mother, Mama Chidima's place. Go to Mama uh, uh, last place. Go to Mama, uh, uh, uh. you know, she was calling names. Go into the street. And the Bible says she kept pouring oil until there was no one. She now told her sons, have you gone around? Go and bring more. They said, Mommy, there is no container in this neighborhood again. The question is this. If that woman 
had not been a good person in that environment, would she have anybody to borrow her container? Now, if she didn't have anybody to borrow her container, what do you think would have happened to her? Her creditor would have come to do what? To take her two sons as slaves. And what would she have concluded? She would have concluded that God doesn't answer prayers. That's why I started by saying, hear me. When you have a prayer life, you must develop good human relation along. So that when God wants to use people for you, it will not be difficult. Now, so many people today cannot enjoy favor again because they have spoiled all the opportunity they have had in relating with people. Let me tell you this truth. God told me this thing many years ago. I've taught some of our leaders here. Look at this altar here. Look at towards my direction. Look at these tiles. Okay? We have them in colors. We have them in now on parts. Look at this now as it is. You know what God told me? He said, son, I don't put people in people's lives. Me, can you your buy? In the fishing He said, What I do is I put people, follow me, on people's paths. So that while the people are moving, they will meet them. But if you as a person does not know how to relate well with people, everything God has sent that person that was put on your path to do for you, you will end it. Imagine if that woman did not have a good relationship attitude. Let them enter the first house. Mama, I make her, my mommy said we should bring container. Who is your mommy? Is it not that pastor wife? That one we wicked. That one that we fought yesterday. Hello? Is it that one that is so stingy? Get out of my house. The mommy will say, okay, don't mind that. Don't mind mama and make her. Mama and make her is our enemy. Go to mama, cheat the mass place. I wrote this down. Hmm. What if she had not been in good terms with the people of her neighborhood? Because the level of miracle she enjoyed was determined by the number of vessels she could get. Her level of miracle was determined by what? The number of vessels. The oil was never supposed to stop until there is no longer container. So look at what that miracle was hanging on. Let's now assume that she does not have good human relations. That's why I always tell those of you that, that treat people anyhow. You never can tell. That person may be working as your staff today, but tomorrow may be your boss. You never can tell where you will meet people. That's why every opportunity you have, every access you have to relate with anyone, relate in such a way that when you have anything to do with that person again, they will be willing to be of help. So I hear. So that miracle that woman enjoyed was not just because there was a power available, but it was because also there was good attitude. I wrote, thank God she had lived in such a way that made it easy for everyone to borrow her their vessels. The first and most important character I would like you to cultivate as a prayer warrior is the character of being nice to your neighbors. Let's start with your neighbors. You know, you could choose some things in life. I want you to know that you didn't choose your neighbor. Or you don't know. You didn't choose your neighbor. God chose your neighbor for you. Where we are living now, I didn't determine the man that built his house beside us. I met him there. Now, those packing in, I didn't determine it. Something, somehow, and that's how God works. Something, somehow, bring us together. But you must learn to relate with people with love and with respect. Now, look at the second story. I love this one too. This one is the miracle of Abraham and his wife Sarah in Genesis chapter 18, 1 to 5. Look at their nature too. Genesis chapter 18, 1 to 5. 
Put that one on screen. Genesis 18. 1 to 5. The Bible says, And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre. And he sat in the tent door, in the, in the tent door, in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself towards the ground. Verse 3. Verse 3. And said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away. I pray thee from thy servant. This man were just going on their own. He said, pass not away. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched and wash your feet and rest yourself under the tree. Abraham did not know that those men were the ones holding the Isaac that they were looking for. But look at his approach. Now I read on, verse 5. And I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort ye your heart. After that you shall pass on for therefore are you come to your servants. And they said, so do and thou, as thou have said. Now what is the lesson? What is the lesson? What is the lesson here? Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Stop positioning yourself as a receiver. A person who always waits for people to give him. That's who a receiver is. Whoever does not develop the character of giving will miss out of the miracles he or she has been praying for. You know, the first one, being good to your neighbor. The second one is stop positioning yourself. Some of you, you are always waiting. Come for me. 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 No, stop that. Now, begin to position yourself as a giver. A blesser. Abraham didn't know those men. They were three. They were just going. He saw them, but he knew they were strangers. And he invited them. Please come, sir. Please come, sir. Can we fetch water so you can wash your leg? I can see that you are travelers. Now, while they were following me, he said, don't worry, sir. I will tell my wife to prepare bread. Let them give. Not knowing that those men were not ordinary men. People that know how to give, they are always on top. Add giving to your prayer life. I have never seen anyone that can pray, 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 pray and break through without giving. I've, we have taught you here severally. I think we started, uh, that should be in February. We started teaching you that there is nobody that doesn't have anything. Stop thinking I don't have. In your little way, make yourself a blessing. In your little way, make yourself a blessing. Now, thank God that Abraham had to stop and told those men. It was after they had eaten the bread of Abraham. Laying but on their bread. He gave them milk. They drank milk. The Bible says when they wanted to go, they now say, eh. <coughs> where is even your wife? Ah, he said, my wife, she's behind the thing, sir. She shall be with his son. Ah, when, she's, when she, she herself had the Bible says she laughed where she was behind the tent. She laughed. You know the laughing she was laughing? She was laughing that maybe these men don't know my age. Maybe they don't know the age of my husband. As at that time, Mommy Sarah was 89 years old. Ah, may God display his glorious miracles in your life this second half in the name of Jesus. But for it to happen, stop positioning, positioning yourself as a mere receiver. That's what some people know. And they can't shout him at me. Hmm. Whoever does not develop the character of giving will miss out of the miracle he or she has been praying for. I wrote here, no matter how small, make blessing people your lifestyle. Did you hear me? No matter how small, make up your mind that you will always bless somebody. No matter how small. And like joke, like I'm telling you, it may they, they may not give you anything back, but you are sowing a seed 
to prepare yourself for your harvest. Let's read on. If Abraham and Sarah, his wife, had positioned themselves as receivers, people who always say, we don't have, they will have missed out of their miracles. That's why as a child of God, add giving to your prayer life. Deliberately add it to your prayer life. Yes, I can pray, but I must learn how to give. Let's look at another case. Number three. The miracle of the tenth leper. That's the third one. In Luke chapter 17, 17 to 19. And Jesus answering said, We're not ten cleansed. She be your mess me wa la wusan. But where are the sorry? But where are the nine? Verse 18. There are not found that return to give glory to God, save the stranger. And look at verse 19. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. Shebime wala wosan. Mesan to kuda, which means one came back to give thanks. What is the third lesson? The third character you must build. Others were healed. But this man was made whole, perfect, because he showed gratitude. Hear me. Being grateful is a character that moves both God and man. That's the third one. Learn how to be grateful. Now, we started by saying, be nice to your neighbors. We moved then to say, make yourself a giver. Now I'm showing you another thing you must add to your prayer life is being grateful. A lot of children of God don't know how to do it. We are always full of prayer points. Pastor, you don't understand. My problem plenty. Pastor, you don't understand. My problem plenty. Pastor, you don't understand. My problem plenty. But go and read scriptures. Every single time Jesus gave thanks, there was a miracle. Even when Lazarus was already buried four days, the Bible says when he told them, roll off the stone, roll off the stone. They said, sir, sir, you don't understand. I'm at his sin. Four days ago, at him, only and he said, roll off the stone. The Bible says when Jesus wanted to pray, what did he do? He gave thanks. He said, Father, I thank you for you always hear me. Was there any reason to thank God in such a case? When you make thanksgiving your character, I'm telling you, you will flow in miracles. He lifted up his voice even when Lazarus was in the grave. So of you, I can't, you can't even remember when you gave thanks, thanks. You are always talking about what you don't have. And, and God, you don't understand. God, you don't understand. God, you don't understand. Ah, my wife, listen. We're, we're investigating something. So we went to a, 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 she went to a site and we're talking about this uh, surrogate association. Now, surrogate, because now, you know, by, according to science, nobody is barren. They say if you cannot be pregnant, they will take your egg, take the egg of your wife, and they will look for somebody that will carry it for you. Now listen. Science have also discovered that when that person carry it for nine months and put that baby to um, deliver that baby, that baby will not have anything that will match with the person that carried the pregnancy. If they do the DNA of the man's egg, uh, of the man and his real wife that they took their eggs, that's what we match. But do you know how much? It's 14 million. To have one child. 14 million naira. Now, this is you. You went into the room with your wife. She came out with a swollen stomach. Nine months you have a son. Because you couldn't eat once, you are complaining. When somebody is looking for 14 million, 
to erase his own name from the name of the baron. No, I'm showing you. You are saying, I don't have any reason to thank God. Pastor, if you know my prayer point. Now, my wife now asked more. Okay, they now said, what they do is that in this surrogate thing, it's not only one woman they use. Once they mix the egg in the lab, they will inject into two women. If the pregnancy of the two stay, that's 18 million. He said, then if you are not interested, you pay your 14 million. There are some couples that don't have the money of surrogate, but they are ready to buy a baby. It's the truth. Any Thanksgiving is an attitude. It's an attitude. It's not a gift. I'm showing you character that you must add to your prayer life. If you don't have it, if you like, be praying one million prayer. you just be wasting your time. Some people, God have had their prayer points. What is waiting? What should convert it to material that they can touch is that they are not grateful people. Go read your Bible now. Every single time that Israel grumbled, people die. God gets angry when they grumble and make sure that they die in thousands. So, what do you, what do you want to say is your own challenge? Pastor, I don't have a job. Some of you don't know that, that yellow guy that is walking around on Liberty Road that has mental disorder. We know him to, the, to his family. We know him to even to his family. With his mental disorder, when he gets in front of the church, he will stop. If he sees me, Pastor, he still recognizes, Pastor, I will now give him money. We know him to his sisters. Thankfulness is a character you must develop. I wrote something down here. I want us to, read, to, to hear it. A grateful person is one that sees all he has as a mere privilege that he needs to be grateful for. And go search scriptures. Look at when the 5,000 men gathered in church. And Jesus told the disciples, this convention has lasted for three days. Convention on no law has lasted for three days. I can't send these people like this away. If it's a church, it's a moon. Become a jail. Lord, your anniversary. The convention back party. I'm a jail. You know, scripture in Latin. Mujade. You know, like every anniversary. Wa, apa malu, aserais. Jesus, uh, you know what? These people, I feel sorry for them. If they go like this, they may die on the wheel. Then one of the disciples says, sir, maybe you didn't see the people. We counted them. All. We counted 5,000 men. We didn't count women and children, sir. Where do we get bread to feed them in this wilderness? You see? He said, even if, even though if, okay, it's in, your, in the scripture, even if we work for three and a half years, three years and six months, we can't pay for their bread. Jesus said, what do we have? See, let me, look up, let me tell you something before I close. 
stop looking for what you don't have. The more you try to look for what you don't have, the more you will be angry. Always think of what you have. Me, I have wife. I have children. I have calling. I know what I don't have, but I'm not thinking about it. Jesus said, what do we have? Not what do we not have. You know why so many, so many of you are troubled, are bothered, are worried, are always crying? It's because you are always thinking of what you don't have. We used to have one sister like that. I will summarize that statement very soon. We used to have one sister, sister Lovett. She, I know she will hear me now. She watches us on. She's married and have children now, have job. She will always tell me. She will be crying, crying, crying. Every time you see her, her eyes will swell. Sister Lovett, what happened? You say, Papa, husband, I no get. Work, I no get. Which I can't get. So last time she called me, after many years, they've relocated to Lagos. Hello, Papa. I just said I should greet you. I say work, I no get. Husband, I no get. He said, I don't get work. I don't get husband. I don't get picking. Jesus said, what do we have? Why are you allowing what you do not have to block your, your, your view from what you have? Some of you, you are too, I don't know. You're always looking at what you don't have. Maybe you even have wife, you never get picking. Abby, you get wife. Somebody no get wife, you no get picking. I was listening to a case on the internet. This lady got married. They said true life story. I'm trying to look for their number to call them. This lady got married to the man. The man did not tell her that he was not, he was not born with manhood. Not that he had injury removed. He was not born. He didn't have it. And the daughter is the, the daughter of a general overseer of a church. They got married. It was after marriage. He said, sir, sir the woman, they said the woman said, we will do everything. When we get to the junction, the man doesn't. What do I do? My parents are saying I should stay in that marriage. What do I do? Say you no get that thing. In your bar, see me, me, oh, ah, because she was tell him all along to la dara. I, you, I, you, bah, see me, me, oh, shut up, Baba Sene. Because you want all that me. Jesus said, Upon all the story that his disciples said, What do we have? He says, We only have five loaves of bread and two fishes. He said, Tell them to sit down. The Bible says he lifted up the five loaves. And what did he do? He gave thanks. Now, so that I will not confuse you. Because I know some of you will be saying, sir. If that lady is your daughter, what will you do? I don't want you to go home confused. I will tell her to leave the marriage. Because the marriage was built on deception. That's why, bro, sister, don't overpackage to enter marriage. Because you will have to lose those packaging. Let the person that wants to marry, marry you. This is me. Before we go in. Don't hide anything. Because some of you, brothers, you know why you make mistake to marry oversized wife? You overpackage to deceive the lady. I work in Shell. I, I, uh, my, my monthly take home is this. 
and you are not walking anywhere. The only shell in your house is the shell of egg. Now she now got married to you with the expectation that ah, my husband is working in shell. And a girl told me now discover that it's only shell of the eggs. That's deception. It will take only God to make that marriage to stand. We are not a married topic. We are coming back. I'm landing up. Jesus lifted up the five loaves of bread. I love my Jesus. He gave thanks for what was not enough. Why not begin to thank God for what is not enough? Stop waiting to do thanksgiving after miracle. That's one problem we have with we Africans. Our thanksgiving is always fixed at the end. I'm on lawful interview. Stop waiting. Thank God for that level that you yourself know. We are in a level of not enough. But Lord, I'm, I'm grateful. Whatsoever you thank God for, go search scriptures. It will multiply. That's how I've been living my life right from day one. I thank God for the church members even when there was no church member. I thank God for the young people even when these people were people that nobody could write anything about. Let thanksgiving be your character. We have to go. So a grateful person, like I said, okay, we've done that. What can we do to develop these characters? Character of being nice to people, that's number one. What's number two? Character of positioning yourself as a giver, not just as a receiver. And what's number three? Position, uh, character of gratitude. Being grateful. That's why I want all, most of our, our women, please learn, learn the uh, uh, attitude of gratitude. Please learn it. When your husband does not have anything to bring home, thank God for his life. Let him have an airport to land. Some men will not be able to come home when there's nothing to deliver. Because they know that they will hear trouble. But be thankful to God for him. At least, even if he does not have money to bring home, he's still alive now. You, see, you are still somebody's wife. You are not a widow. Oh, still I want to make a car up my phone. I want to network by next year. And you too, as a man, thank God for your wife. Even if she's not a banker, thank God for your wife. Thank God for whom God gave you. Stop comparing your wife with one woman somewhere. If the husband of that one to tell you what she's going, what is going through, you will thank God for your own. What can I do to develop these characters? I'll just tell you in A, B, and A, B, C, and D. I'll rush through. There's no time. Good character. So, okay, John Maxwell said this. Let me quote John Maxwell's uh, quote to you. John Maxwell said, Talent is a gift, but character is a choice. It means that to have good character, you must make up your mind that you want, you want it. And we go all the way to develop it. Understand this. Let me read again. John Maxwell said, Talent is a gift. But character is a choice. It means that to have good character, you must have made up your mind that you want it, that's one, and that you will go all the way to develop it. Now, it does not mean that the devil does not want to come to your mind to say, complain. No, you say no. You, you make up your mind, I will be grateful to God. I'll be grateful to people. You make up your mind, I will be nice to people, no matter what they do. You make up your mind, I will position myself as a giver, no matter what ha happens. So it's a choice. So good character, A, begins with you 
being hungry for it. If you are not hungry for it, you can't have it. The Bible says, blessed are those that test and hunger for righteousness. So the first one is what hunger for it. Number two, in developing character, you will have to enforce yourself to follow the dream of a good character. Number two, enforce yourself. Number three, seek help from God in the place of prayer. Be praying. You ask for the grace. And the last one, don't give up on yourself. Even when you are trying and you are failing, keep trying. Can I tell you this truth? The first time my wife brought my children and knelt down in front of me and said, they came to say thank you. I now think of how God we feel. Apart from that, think of how all those people that have been blessing you in little, little ways we feel. One of our staffs, any single time we pay salary, the next day, she will need and say, Daddy, I saw my salary in my account. Thank you, sir. Some people don't care. Sir, one is one she share for me. What if I pay your bag and your salary? Some people have, 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 uh, they have, uh, they have retired. How many years? They have not collected their gratuity till now. Learn to be thankful. Please, learn to be thankful. With these three characters, I'm telling you, if you add it to your prayer life, you'll be, having, you'll be getting results. What's number one again? Be nice to your neighbors. They are the doors around you. I want you, I want you to hear that. What's number two again? Position yourself as a giver, not just as a receiver. Bless lives. And what's number three? Be grateful. Be on your feet. Are you blessed again this morning? Be on your feet. I want to give you two minutes to thank your heavenly father for how good he has been to you. Go ahead and begin to thank the Lord. Go ahead and begin to thank the Lord. Go ahead and begin to thank the Lord. Go ahead and thank the Lord. Go ahead and thank the Lord. Today is anointing service. Clean the inside. Go ahead and give thanks. For what you have. Now, be specific. Begin to thank God for what you have. If you look deep, you will know you have something. Thank God for what you have. Thank God for what you have.
thank God for what you have. Mention what you have to him. I have life. I have hope. <laughs> Jesus name we have given thanks open your eyes before anoint to look up when you now get home if there are people that God has used or is using for you in one way or the other send a message of thank you today are you hearing me and try to be specific Let it now be your permanent lifestyle. That you will thank God for everything that comes your way as an opportunity. You will see. I'm telling you. You will come back to tell me. You will see how doors will be opening for you. Don't let the devil allow what you do not have to discourage you. Every time he shows you what you don't have, show him what you have. And let him know that, see, that thing that you think I don't have, I will soon have it. Because some of you, the way God starts everybody's life is different. Now, some of you, God started your life with good or good job. You are not here married. Do you understand? You just follow God's will for your life. Now, with thankfulness, every door will open. I'm telling you, every door will open. You will see how your children will come in. You will see how your, your marriage will come. You will see how your, your job will come. You will see how your visas will be granted. But thank God for everything that you have. Everything that he has done. Father, I bless the oil in Jesus' name. As we are anointed today, 